Part 4 of the SHTF Field Test. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm sorry it took so long to get back to you, but if you were not aware, I did do a field test with all my gear. I went out into the mountains uh, and did a SHTF bug out at my friend's property uh, over in the Adirondack Mountains. And it was gorgeous, it was cold, all that good stuff. And I learned a lot about what the SHTF is and how much gear I can actually carry, especially in a mountainous environment, which is pretty brutal. So what I had to do is come back and repack and rethink and reorg. So I completely urge you to watch point part one all the way until this one right here. I did change my pack out. It took me a while to get it. This is the uh, 511 100 all right i'll put all the specs down below i had the 72 hour pack or this rush 72 rush 72 was good for uh maybe uh, 72 hours this is the 100 has a lot more cubic inches and it has a lot more stuff it has a lot more space so i could put gear in it as needed now i also did change a little bit of my uh chest rig not too much again i'm going to assume that we're going to carry some type of rifle so i have rifle pouches here but a lot of this has more to do with survival than it does actual combat again i think the idea in shtf is to not be spotted however have enough ammunition and enough self-protection to defend yourself but really just to get out of dodge being hidden being away from urban environments or large populations is probably going to be more successful than if you had to get stuck in an urban environment. So therefore, I always have my gear packed, ready to go. I know my plans, my comp plans, my alternate plans, where we're going to meet up with the family, what we're going to do, that kind of thing. And I just throw this stuff in a car and I go. Now, I'm not going to get into, you're not going to see any firearms on this one. If you want to see the firearm that I was carrying for the first uh, video, then go ahead and check out that video. And uh, for this one, we're probably not going to talk about guns at all, just because it's more about the gear uh, selection and we'll get into guns at a later date. What I need you guys to do is to like, subscribe, share, Check out all the links I have down below. I will put links to all this gear and believe me, it is a lot of gear. I will also say that you need to be in very good shape. Although this is a Rush 100 and it is packed pretty stout in winter time, you will have to pack a lot of gear if you're going to stay out in the cold. Today, I think it is January, no, it's February 1st, 2023 and it's about 16 degrees here. So without any type of warming layers or add on shelter, you will freeze to death. So SHTF or not, you need to have something. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the uh, camera so we can get an overall look at some of the gear that I updated and upgraded and uh, just more about the thought process of why I went into getting a bigger pack and adding some of the options. All right, guys, so this is my Mayflower rig, all right, as you can see there. Mayflower rig is not cheap. This is the Recce rig. Uh, you can add, I think, six or seven magazines up front if you like. It has these two side pouches. It also has side pouches here and here. You can use them for pistol mags, and it also has a map pouch, all right? So you can add stuff in there. So since I have this open, let's look at what I have in here, all right? So I have... Just a regular platypus bag. If I needed to carry water that I didn't have my camel back on me, I can do that. Let's see, I have a couple sets of different batteries, more batteries. I have the map of my location. The map of my location, it is a topo map. So this is gonna help me immensely to the location that I was in. All right, no car maps, nothing like that. I do have some other navigational aids, such as my GPS. And I know that this GPS will run out of battery at some point, so therefore I'm gonna have to charge it up. All right, but again, I wanted to make sure navigation was taken care of, especially if you're running around in the mountains. All right, I also have my Sunto. I think this is the MC2, Sunto MC2. All right, because I know that eventually this will run out of batteries and I'm going to need to navigate. Also, as far as navigation goes, map pens. 
right in the rain if i have to jot down notes that kind of thing i also have that as well wet wipes because sometimes you got to go to the bathroom and unless you want to use your shirt or sleeves carry some wet wipes this is all on my chest rig, all right? I also have this. This is my survival tin. Although it is not a replacement for the gear that you're carrying, if you had nothing and you just had a bug out with your, um, your recce rig, then at least you had something to survive off of. So this has fire starter, this has signaling, this has all that kind of stuff, all right? So if you need one of these, go to threeriverblades.com. You can order one. It is a 20 piece survival tin. I have my comms. Same old Baofang that I was using on the mountain, so that works. All right, again, you're gonna need batteries and chargers and stuff like that. All right, for my, for my knife, I just have a very simple... All right, this is a SE4. Again, you decide what knife you want. I just wanted to have a small fixed blade on me, but for now, I just threw this on there. It just clips on the side and it's very, very convenient, okay? Inside here, I have a flashlight. All right, this happens to have the uh, finger ring or pinky ring. So if I needed to do some tactical stuff, I could. All right, this battery seems to be dying, so I'm gonna have to replace that. But I wanted to have some type of flashlight available. Just some food in that pouch, some trail mix, some trail nuts. Fire starting kit. All right, if I'm by myself and it is 16 degrees outside, I'm probably gonna want some type of fire starting kit. Cami paint, all right, I don't think I had cami paint in there before, but again, if it's an SHTF scenario, I'm probably gonna wanna cami up just to stay clear of anybody else. I think in here, some more fruit bars, nut bars, that kind of thing, some type of sustainment. Over here on the side, I have my, all right, see if I can pull it out, yep. This is my soft tea tourniquet in orange. It's right here on the side, right next to my medical kit. My medical kit, I chose to use this whole big pouch, some trauma shears, everything in here is waterproof. I wanted to make sure it's waterproof. I got some thick plastic bags. If you watch my older video, I did have like a Condora kind of setup, but I was trying to reduce the weight, so plastic bags does work. And inside here, I have all my medications, so pain aids, stomach indigestion, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then on the back end over here, just a simple multi-tool. All right, this is the multi-tool surge, so it's really big and has a lot of different options. So, and I also do have extra blades and extra type of uh, tools in here. So I think most of the time, if I'm bugging out, I will have some of this stuff on me, but I think that it's important to have all your gear ready to go. Now let's get back into the pack. All right, guys, so this is a Rush 100. I'm not gonna get too much into it. Just wanna show you what the back and the sides look like. I will say that uh, there are many reviews on this pack, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna over review it. These are just some of the items that I think are essential in a winter bug out. Now this pack by itself, as it stands, probably weighs about 50 pounds, so it is not a lightweight, but I will advise you that you need to be in some type of shape if you're gonna carry this type of gear. And if you are in an SHTF, you will carry a lot of gear in the winter because it's important that you do so and you absolutely need to. All right, just to give you an idea of what it looks like when it's all packed up, ready to go, I have a couple of side sustainment pouches and I added some sustainment pouches on the side. Again, these are SOE, uh, SOE gear. I'm a big fan of SOE and on this side, sustainment pouch, and this happens to be a shovel, and I'll get into that in a minute, okay? Uh, everything else is completely packed away the way I need it, the way I like it. I also have on the bottom a thermarest because I think that's what was lacking uh, last time that we were out there, but uh, I don't have to worry about that now. I did also upgrade to a longer size uh, ha a hatchet or small boy's ax. I think that if you're going to a mountainous area in any type of woods that or any type of mountain environment, you're gonna need an ax. Um, it just makes your life a whole lot easier, especially if you're gonna build shelter and be there a while. Now, if you're trying to move lightly and quickly, you're probably not gonna need this, 
but I like to have it and then if I don't need it then I could always put it somewhere else but again a small axe or a hatchet works very well in the forest so I'm going to try to take that with me. All right, let's drop the pack. Let's drop the camera and see what we can do. All right, guys, I just added a Thermarest here. It's a little bit older, but it's worked for me in the past. I never had a problem with it. All right, this is the one that you have to blow up or the one that actually, you know, is self-inflating, if you will. Um, there's pros and cons to this thing, especially in a winter environment. Uh, you don't want to put too much moisture in there because then it'll freeze and be like a rock. Uh, also, if you pop it, uh, then you're kind of laying on the ground anyway. So maybe closed cellular foam is probably going to be a little bit better in a winter environment But it is super lightweight and it helps out quite a bit. All right I'm gonna to try to loosen some of these buckles so we can get into some of the stuff that's in here On this bottom zipper. I have my rain kit. All right, you guys saw me make a shelter with this. It was very simple uh, This is a really good rain poncho. You can use it as a poncho You can use it as shelter as you watched in the videos uh, two and three. I think it was really important to have some type of shelter and I like it on the outside So it was very very quick to do and I could set it up immediately. All right, let's get a little bit into the top Okay, so let's see what we have here. All right Wool socks. All right a separate pair of socks. The only difference here is uh, I probably should have put them in a plastic bag So I'm gonna do that now but again, have another set of clothing, especially if you're humping and hiking all day. All right, I do have some twine. This is tarred and braided size 36. So that's gonna work. I think, I think having a lot more of the braided stuff works better than having 550 cord just because it's a smaller roll and it's easier to uh, use in the field. That's just me. But again, 550 cord will do you just as good. All right. Butt wipes, sanitation, have some way to wipe your butt. Sanitation is going to be paramount. Garbage liners, all right, garbage bag liners. Please make sure you have garbage bag liners. What this does is allows you to make leaf beds, quickie shelters. If you got to carry water, that kind of thing, you're never going to go wrong carrying garbage bag liners. The 55 gallon drums work excellent. Gun cleaning kit. Now this is a multi kit. This kit is, I think, Otis, where it has a lot of rifle and pistol type items. So I can go anywhere from a 22 all the way up to a 12 gauge. And depending on the rifle or pistol that I'm carrying, as you saw in the video, I was carrying my uh, uh, 308 uh, M1A and a I think a 10 millimeter. All right. So this will definitely clean both of those. But again, depending on what rifle and pistol you choose, you should have some way of cleaning them as well, especially out there in the cold and the wet. All right. This hasn't changed. This is my pocket boy. Pocket boy was excellent. It's small, it's lightweight. And again, if I wanted to go out for longer, I would probably get the larger size and that would work as well as as well too but again you decide how many tools you're going to carry because if you're going to be out there for a long time or if you're trying to move fast will determine what you're going to carry all right inside here i did change my setup from carrying the whole balls glass to just carrying a bunch of nails all right these nails right here are i think two penny three penny nails or the three or i will say three to four inch nails this just happens to be a pouch it's a little bit more lightweight and it's a little bit more useful than carrying a glass jar around. Again, this is an SOE pouch. I got this as like a free gift, but as you can see in here, I have a bunch of nails. And if you are going to be out in the SHTF for a very, very long time, you're probably going to need to build shelter. You should have something uh, to put things together with. All right. Chem lights, just three chem lights. Chem lights are good for signaling. They're good for seeing things in the dark, that kind of thing. If you have other follow on units, let's say you're part of a militia or if you need to single helicopters or for help, that's definitely going to work for you. All right. And this other pouch right here, I have a sharpening stone, a sharpening puck, have some way to sharpen your tools. Again, knives, axes, uh, all that kind of stuff at some point will go dull. You decide how you want to sharpen it. If you want to use a, a river rock, that's fine. But sometimes it's just easier to carry the things that you need and not worry about it later. 
duct tape 100 duct tape all right this happens to be gorilla tape it's a one inch brand you decide how you want to carry it but duct tape is very hard to reproduce out in the field so make sure you carry some type of duct tape all right so at the top again nice warming layers all right you should have this stuff on you but i know it's going to be a big pain to try to maneuver and walk around with hot weather gear so these are just insulate leather gloves and as you can see they're pretty well worn they're pretty well used so get some of those also get work gloves these are my mechanics gloves again very well worn very well used ideally you want gloves to work with and if they get wet and soggy uh, you don't have to you let them dry by the fire and then you could get some insulated gloves and then keep your hands warm all right very simple shama and nothing to say about that other than you should have one uh, it's good for all types of purposes to keep you warm if you needed to um, wipe your butt whatever to keep you warm or it's good for first aid it's good for carrying firewood whole bunch of things also a beanie very ideal to keep yourself warm and again clothing right so these are Gore-Tex top and bottom all right one of the things that I wore out there was hunting pants that kind of thing but Gore-Tex top and bottom they don't have to be in Marpat but you do need some type of rain gear rain kit if you are going in a wet cold environment which in January and February it is a very wet and cold environment so bring the top bring the bottom okay here's the bottom set top and bottom Gore-Tex I know they cost some money but you know what it's your life you decide how you want how much how miserable you want to be all right a little bit of camouflage I wasn't really thinking about this before but I updated this so this is a German uh, throwover. So it's made out of cotton, so it's not waterproof, but what it does is it breaks up the outline of your body. Notice everything is uh, green and camo and that kind of thing. Well, if I throw this smock over my camouflage, if I throw this smock over my body and over my pack, um, you're not gonna be able to see me in the snow and in the forest, which is kind of what you wanna do when I say hiding out. Again, it's just cotton, so it's not gonna be waterproof, and if it gets wet, it's not gonna work as an insulating layer, but as a camouflage layer, it works really well. As you can see right there, I don't know if I could pull up the name brand, but it is called, it's a German schmuck, and it's only available in surplus, okay? So if you can get that, great. If you can't get it, try eBay, uh, try your Army Navy stores. They should have a bunch of those. Food, all right, let's talk about food. This is all freeze-dried food. Now I know some guys gonna be like, just get MREs, that kind of thing. This is a lot of freeze-dried food. This is about, I don't know, 12, 13 meals in here. Um, the reason why, and I'm not against MREs, but MREs are heavy, MREs are bulky. So, you know, be advised. I've, I've lived on MREs for quite some time. Uh, but if you have the chance to boil your food or cook your food, you kind of want to have that warmth feeling. It's kind of a morale booster. Uh, and again, you're not always going to have a fire, but you know, there's ways around that and we'll get into that in a second. Hygiene. Proper hygiene. All right. Again, I just put it in a plastic bag. Some washcloths, soap, mouthwash, petroleum jelly, you know, anything to clean your body, clean your butt. People don't realize how important hygiene is, but what happens is you get crusty, you get sores, uh, you start chafing. Once you, once all that stuff starts to happen, you open yourself up to infection. And then when you get infection, you get sick. So now you're out in the bush with all this stuff in a terrible environment. And now you're dirty, you're scratching, and now you're getting sick. All right. So please try to keep your body as clean as possible. Um, I don't, I don't recommend just going for it. Uh, I highly recommend doing some type of, uh, hygiene. This is my bivy. All right. That's going to go with, there you go. All right. That's going to go with my sleeping bag. So this happens to be a recon five minus 20. All right. What I did last time is I did not have any of this, all right? And I think right now, as cold as it is, you need a sleeping bag. I don't care if you don't carry anything else. I don't care if you carry just a sleeping bag and throw all this stuff in it. If you are in a cold, cold, cold environment, like up in the mountains, and 
If you are in a cold environment, like up in the mountains, and you don't have a sleeping bag, you're probably gonna freeze to death. So can you survive? Yeah, you're gonna be miserable without it. This is not a comfort item, this is a survival item. So what I would do is I would take, I would take my garbage bags, make it a ground tarp. I would put the thermarest inside the sleeping bag so it doesn't move around. And then I would put the whole sleeping bag and thermarest inside my bivy. You have quadruple layers now of keeping you warm. Then if you wanted to add more comfort, you put a tarp on top of it and now you have yourself a little house, a little hut, whatever it is, and that will keep you alive, all right? We're talking about survival here. Not gonna be the most ideal conditions, but having a good sleeping bag will keep you alive. All right, we're talking a little bit about fire. Here's my other fire kit. All right, so I have trioxines. I have uh, windproof matches. I have a fire striker. I have a lighter and I have a candle with aluminum foil. I also have on here the, uh, the um, I forget what these are. They're like infused with wax and paraffin. So if you light one of these, it's a good tinder that kind of works. But I wanted to have some some type of fire kit. Uh, trying to light a fire in the middle of the winter is very difficult at best. Now you add stress, you add water, you're trying to survive. It's going to be very, very difficult. So have some type of fire kit. I also wanted to mention inside the pack, I do have my water bladder. If I didn't already mention it, I already have the hose connected. I don't want to pull it out right now, but in an emergency, what we're going to do is we're going to fill that sucker up to the top. So I'll have water on hand, ready to go. And then we could, uh, we could move on with that on the side pouches. And this is where it gets a little bit different on the side pouches. I also have my clean canteen. I have my nesting cup. I'll get into that in a second. I have my water purification. I have a little bit of tin foil again for fires and I have some bouillon, some coffee, some banana bag. Banana bag is just a um, oral solution. So electrolytes, that kind of thing. And I have some hot cocoa. All right. This was a new purchase that I also got was the largest pot or cooking pot that I can find. All right, I forget who makes this, but this is a very large cooking pot. It says, uh, oh, Val Valtican, Valtican. All right, this is titanium. It does come with a lid. All right, so this is the largest one I could find that fits a bottle. And I think this is 65 liters. Let's see, hold on. Yeah, so this is a 65 liter, but what I like about it is it fits inside here. It's not perfect. It does rattle a little bit, but honestly, I think it's a, it's a good, uh, it's necessary to have some type of cooking pot. Again, I'm gonna be using my jet boil to cook most of this food. So I wanna make sure that I have, again, I'm gonna be using my jet boil to cook most of this food. So I wanna make sure that I have the things that I need. This is gonna be about gathering water and boiling water. And then once that's clean, I could put it in my water bladder and I can move around. I will say that my water bladder is a separate thing. It's not just a bladder, it does have the shoulder strap. So if I wanna pull it out, throw on my chest rig, I could also do that. So this way I have my gear staged. On the left side of my pack, I'm also carrying this. This happens to be the Gerber military trifold shovel, all right? A lot of people don't carry shovels because of the weight. I totally get that. But if you're talking about long term and building shelters, you're going to need a shovel. All right. The axe is good. You could probably use a stick. But when the ground is frozen, you actually need the tool to do the job. Uh, uh, when you watch my other videos, you see I had a very small shovel um, and it was OK, but it wasn't it wouldn't be as good as this. The trifold is is a tried and true. Um, tried and true shovel i've used these in the marine corps not this one but i had the old aluminum ones it this one is gerber has a little bit more plastic or a little bit more polymer but i think they they weigh about the same it is heavy i'm not gonna lie but uh i think that it's important if you are gonna leave for good or at least leave for an extended amount of time you're gonna need a shovel if nothing else to dig sanitary holes so you can go to the bathroom but 
uh, mostly for shelter and for survival if you're gonna live outside. All right, guys, last but not least, I'm gonna have some type of spork. I will have my fish mouth spreader that I can also use for my, uh, my bottle. So if I need to boil water as well, and I am gonna carry my jet boil. If you watched in the video, I did connect my jet boil and my fuel canister together to boil coffee. But again, I think it's important to understand that these items, although, although temporary, gets a very quick fire. So if something happens where you need to make a very quick fire, it's very easy just to light this up. And again, I know that this oxygen, uh, I'm sorry, this gas mix doesn't always work very well in cold environments. Uh, so you might have to heat it up or take this canister, put it in your jacket or coat pocket just to keep it warm. And then eventually it will work. But I'd rather do that than trying to make an actual fire because this is all self-contained. And again, uh, it's quick. I want to cook my food. I want to cook my soup. I want to cook my water, whatever it is I need to do, and then get out uh, as soon as possible if there's a problem. All right. So having a jet boil, you decide if it's worth it for you. And for me, it is worth it. Um, I want to get in and get out. But again, you decide what's good for you. All right. So let's go back video. up top. All right, guys, I hope you appreciate this video. This is the fourth installment of my SHTF bug out scenario. Uh, I had to kind of repurpose and reorganize a lot of my gear, add some things, take some things out. Uh, I am looking to get into the mountains again to retest my gear. This is a refit or retrofit. Uh, I'm trying to understand and, and figure out what's the best scenario. Uh, it is very, very cold outside, and I think that's the best time to test your gear because that's probably when most things are going to go wrong is when you're freezing. Uh, and uh, I put all this together. So we'll see. Stay tuned for part five. If I ever get to it, I want to make sure that I get out there when it's chilly. And uh, I will be testing out the new gear, the new pack, uh, the new setup, all that kind of great stuff. So if you like, videos like this. I need you to like, subscribe, put some comments down below, share this video with everybody else. It really helps the algorithms. Look in the links below for any of this gear. I am an Amazon affiliate. So if uh, you purchase something from me, I get like two cents on the dollar. Also go to Three River Blades and Three River Kydex if you're looking for holsters, Three River Blades if you're looking for knives. And if you're looking for discounts, please get on our mailing list. Go to threeriverblades.com, go all the way down to the bottom, first name, last name, and email address, double opt in. And what that'll do is give you discounts to all my knives. I don't send them anywhere else. So if you want discount codes, that's the only place to get it is via email. Also become a Patreon member, It'll only cost you $1 a month and you'll watch videos like this before anybody else. All right, guys, thank you very much. And as always, stay safe.